All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakah Kodash. The abundance to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akio. This is 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. People need to start taking to the streets. Because this is time for vengeance. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. He is clearly trying to ignite a civil war. And you push back on them! And you tell them they're not welcome! I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. It's going to be almost like Spanish Civil War stuff. This is a dictator. We were taking the streets. We need a revolution at this point. He is planting the seeds for a civil war. Matthew chapter 24, verses 7 to 8. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In the US, violent clashes broke out on Saturday in the city of Portland, Oregon, where a rally was being held to denounce President Trump's immigration policy. Fighting flared between the nationalist Patriot Prayer Group and the anti-fascist organization Antifa. People in the crowd lit firecrackers and smoke bombs, and police used flashbangs to try to clear the area. Elsewhere, hundreds of marches took place peacefully under the banner, Families Belong Together. They were protesting the Trump administration's zero tolerance immigration policy that's led to more than 2,000 children being separated from their parents at the US-Mexico border. Trump has signed an executive order reversing the policy, but most of the children still remain separated from their parents. Last week, a judge ordered that the families be reunited within 30 days. We are the National Socialist Movement and the Nationalist Front. It was a controversial and fiery morning in Noonan as about three dozen neo-Nazis met up with more than hundreds of counter-protesters. That neo-Nazi rally has been stirring up controversy in the small Metro Atlanta city ever since the group applied for a permit to hold that rally several weeks ago. And today, during the rally, the majority of business owners in downtown Noonan shut their doors as members of the National Socialist Movement, along with hundreds of counter-protesters, moved into town. Uh, all the people that contacted us from the city and from the surrounding areas were able to get a, uh, in touch with us, we'll follow up, we'll recruit them, and uh, bring, bring them on to us. Counter-demonstrators came here to downtown Noonan to send a personal message to the representatives of the National Socialist Movement, the neo-Nazis who were rallying in the park. And they got their chance. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! This is why they were here, for this moment, just after four o'clock, when the neo-Nazis showed up and the protesters shouted their condemnations. The two groups separated from each other by about the length of a football field and fencing and barricades and dozens of Georgia State troopers in riot gear. Protesters could barely see the neo-Nazis. They sure couldn't hear them, but the neo-Nazis couldn't help but hear the protesters. I just think hate in any form is not right. That's why we're not out here violently. We're not out here mad at anyone. I think we're just standing up for those that are being hated on. And we just want to show that we will not allow hate in Noonan or Cowardly Abroad, or we do not allow hate in anywhere. Uh, we just want to show that our people are united all across the board. And again, about 10 protesters were arrested a few minutes ago. The police chief of Noonan, Buster Meadows, said, I am very relieved there were no injuries on this day. While the world is experiencing a wide array of threats like hurricanes and nuclear war, one of the biggest threats remains one of the oldest ones out there. 
infectious disease. In their recently released Goalkeepers report, Bill and Melinda Gates wrote that disease, both infectious and chronic, is the biggest public health threat the world faces in the next decade. Last year, Gates also wrote an op-ed for Business Insider where he wrote, whether it occurs by a quirk of nature or at the hand of a terrorist, epidemiologists say a fast-moving airborne pathogen could kill more than 30 million people in less than a year. The Kaloa area in Tiati sub-county are now a worried lot. This follows an outbreak of a strange disease they say has so far claimed eight lives in the area. And as Cecilia Wakesho now reports, hundreds of locals are still seeking medical attention. Baringo's Kaloa area in Tiati sub-county lies this only private hospital, Lodengo Health Center. Each of the four wards in the hospital is packed to capacity with patients being administered with intravenous fluid. According to the nurse in charge, eight people have so far died in the past two weeks following an outbreak of a strange disease. Who gonjo at Jajua, Kabisan Ninini, Watu a county, Wame respond, Wame letter dawa, Nawame chukwa specimens, Lakina Waja letter feedback, Watuambie. Ninini kipea mtu broad spectrum antibiotics na tetracycline kama doxycycline wana improve ama the prognosis is good. Others especially mothers with young children are now opting to sleep under trees at the hospital. Patients complain of vomiting and diarrhea accompanied by restlessness and abdominal pains. Tests have however ruled out cholera outbreak. Some have associated the disease with the ongoing heavy rains. We want to also ask uh, other people including Kenya Red Cross and, um, uh, uh, and the national government, the Ministry of Health, to move in with speed and see how they can help. With affected areas lacking refurbished dispensaries, community leaders are now appealing for immediate intervention from the government to ensure that the situation is arrested. Cecilia Kesho, KTN News. Outside the John F. Kennedy Hospital in Monrovia, Liberia. 20-year-old Ibaga Stiwo is sick. His parents wait beside him. All signs point to the late stages of Ebola, oh. the deadly virus that's killed more than 2,300 across West Africa. He just vomiting, he tolling, vomiting, tolling, vomiting, tolling, he eat, he vomit. He. Not gonna get a paper back. Ah. As sick as he is, ah. he won't be allowed inside. Ah. The largest hospital in the nation, and many others just like it. Are completely full. But I want to tell you, and the hospital now will go to the same month. They say we should wear the title of Shukan. This is Ben C. Solomon in Monrovia, Liberia. This city of one and a half million is the first major metropolitan area to face an Ebola outbreak since the virus was discovered in 1976. Hundreds have died here since the outbreak began in May. And the World Health Organization expects thousands of new cases in the coming weeks. With a limited number of hospital beds and personnel to treat the sick, many of the infected are left to die at the hospital gates. It's heartbreaking. There is nothing I can do about it uh, because I have no space. I don't have the capacity. Local and foreign-run treatment centers alike are unable to cope with the surge. Here at the Doctors Without Borders Treatment Center, they too are at capacity. What we're looking at here is about uh, 350 bed hospital. Never, no one has never done this before. To turn people away at the door that are sick, that is a new experience and, and a difficult one to handle because we are full every day. We are not capable of building fast enough. 10 to 15 die each day here, but their beds quickly filled. The virus is spreading fast among families in Monrovia's slums. And with an incubation period over several weeks, no one knows exactly how many more patients will arrive in the months ahead. If you look back in time, uh, MSF have been able to cope with outbreaks that have been going on from year to year because they have been small. But at the moment we are down on our knees. So who else is there? After a few hours outside, a crowd formed around Ibaga and his family. Many were angry, urging them to go home. 
They say because the virus. The people will not look at us, so we should carry back to the hospital. The hospital worker finally came out to calm the crowd. The war is full. No capacity. You understand? So are they not elaborate? Uh, uh, the, no, the, the but the forward field of GFA is very I'm big. Later in the afternoon, Ibago was finally admitted. But for his family, what comes next remains a mystery. Every day they're making an announcement we, when you get a safe patient, we put a safe patient. Same with you. Nothing they are done. Get them or wait, wait, wait. We're waiting. We don't know what to do. Now, coffee farmers across the country have been put on alert for a coffee disease outbreak identified as Solai Elgon dieback, which occurs mostly during rainy seasons. The Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization has issued an advisory to farmers in high altitude areas and asked them to begin immediate management of the disease in order to contain further spread. Solai Elgon dieback is a bacterial blight disease that causes water soaked swellings on the leaves, buds, flowers, and young branches and can destroy. Plant complete, the plant completely, leaving the farmer without anything to harvest. Now, in the past, the disease was localized in Solai, the county of Nakuru, and Mount Elgon in Transzoya, hence the name Solai Elgon. But it has now been reported in Nyeri, Kiambu, Kisi, Nandi, and Muranga counties. Kalro is asking farmers not to move between infected crops and uninfected ones in order to contain the spread and to also contact the nearest Kalro center immediately if they suspect their coffee is infected. A health epidemic is affecting a number of regions in Peru. The disease mainly affects the motion and strength of the arms and legs. Jaime Herrera brings us more details from Lima. In the last two weeks, the health system of the La Libertad region in Peru has registered more than 15 cases of the Guillain-Barre syndrome. More than 10 other cases were registered in Lima as well among people from various regions of the country. This has forced the health ministry to declare a health alert in both regions. There's never been a case like this before in the country, so it's deeply concerning because it's a very serious disease that affects the motion of arms and legs. The health ministry still doesn't know how people contract the illness. Since the alert was declared, the ministry has been asking people to take care of their respiratory and intestinal systems and to prevent being bitten by mosquitoes that may transfer Zika. It's also possible that patients with Guillain-Barre might have had Zika before. The symptoms presented by people with this disease are weakness and cramps in the lower extremities. The Ministry of Health also said that they are taking care of ill people in the previously mentioned regions and are also ready to act around the country. But this alert revealed the real situation of the health system in Peru. Many have said that they were not attended to before. In different health centers, when they started feeling the symptoms, especially in Trujillo. People also said that the lack of a health insurance, private or public, forced them to buy medicine at high prices in private pharmacies, and that many of these people are poor. Experts state that the national health system showed the little concern it has for the most vulnerable sectors and how unprepared it is to respond to outbreaks. <laughs> It's one of the rarest things I've ever heard of. It was another overcast and windy winter day in Draper when a not so normal thing happened. As I was driving, these birds just were falling out of the sky. Lacey Brown was one of the people who saw things firsthand. 
They were all on the ground right around here and along the roadway. They were just falling out of the sky like leaves. But they weren't leaves. They were hundreds of small birds called starlings. And like most birds, starlings like to flock. You've seen that black cloud as it's flying all over the place. Well, that's a starling group, and they call that uh, flying tandem or murmuring. Experts say it's a technique they use to stay warm in the wintertime and to ward off birds of prey. So what would cause hundreds of birds to fall from the sky? Some people are saying aliens. Others are saying maybe it was lightning or they were poisoned. But in this circumstance, none of those are the case. No aliens, no, no, no cloaking device, no poison. It's just one of those freak things that the birds were just flying along crashed into the side of a large vehicle and boom. Whether it be misdirection or weather related, something caused the lead starling to crash. And thanks to the breed's tandem flying, the rest followed. So I pulled over to help because I noticed some of them were not dead. Lacey says she saw one man shoveling the birds out of the road. Draper Animal Services was also there clearing the animals and collecting the ones that were still alive. Yeah, it was not, uh, not a sight for the faint of heart. It was weird. Just a weird one. Second Ezra's 15, verse 37. And there should be great fearfulness and trembling upon earth. And they that see the wrath should be afraid. And trembling should come upon them.